Hi everyone, this is Rob Gray from ASU and the Perception Action Podcast. I'm very excited to announce that my book is here. So for those of you that are regular listeners, you know I've been alluding to this for a while. Um, I've been working on a book on, on skill acquisition. It's called How We Learn to Move, A Revolution in the Way We Coach and Practice Sports Skills. Well, I'm happy to say the book is, when you're hearing this, the book is now available. Um, the easiest way to find it is on Amazon. There's an ebook and a paperback version. You can also go to perceptionaction.com forward slash book, where you'll find a bit more information about it and also the links to order. So what I want to do in this presentation is to go um, through a little bit of a preview of the book and talk about some of my motivations for writing it. And I would really be honored if you consider buying it and, and reading it and give me some feedback. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy. I'm happy with the way it turned down. It's something I think about doing for a while. So, um, and I think if you're a listener to my material, I think you will enjoy it because you'll see it's a lot of, obviously a lot of similarities there. So the, why did I write this book now? Well, I, really two motivations. One is I wanted to give kind of people a launching point for the ecological approach, ecological dynamics in coaching, Sports skills mostly, but also other movement skills. You know, I get lost a lot about resources. You know, what book should I read? You know, what paper should I read? And a lot of cases, it's people, you know, I've heard about this topic of constraints or self-organization or ecological dynamics, and where should I start? And I always felt, you know, there's some great books out there, you know, um, you know, Button and All's uh, Dynamics of Skill of Acquisition, for example, that are great resources. But I, I always found that, you know, they're, you know, they're very in depth and they go through uh, high level, a uh, lot of concepts and, you know, it's, it's quite involved in reading those. And I always wanted, you know, was looking for something that's a bit gets you to the logic of the ecological approach, talks about some of the key concepts, some of the key research people without going into all the elaborate detail of it. Um, so kind of give you a starting point to, to, to launch to. And so that's one of the things I was trying to achieve, kind of more of a general audience book, maybe, <laughs> about uh, the ecological approach. And the second thing I wanted to try to do was to bring in all the different aspects, right? Most of the books in this area are focused specifically on practice design or on coaching kids for physical education. What I wanted to try to do in this book is bring in the whole picture, right? Because I, I hope, I know I've emphasized in the podcast, I think this approach has far, far reaching beyond just practice design. Obviously, there's a ton in there on practice design, but also injury prevention, uh, youth coaching has been talked in other, other books, uh, technology development, using analytics for sports and so on. So I wanted to bring that all together and try to show how I think it fits all together in this big picture of this ecological approach, right? So that's really what I was trying to achieve with this book to kind of be, so I think, both if you're brand new to this this idea of this different way of coaching, this revolution, as I'm calling it, and I think if you're you're no way heavily involved in it, I'm hoping you'll find it useful as well as a resource to kind of you know capture some of the main ideas and, and things that are up along that line. So that that's what I was trying to achieve. So let me go through a little bit of kind of the what's in the book in terms of the I'll go through chapter by chapter and talk about some of the things you expect to find and. Coming up, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make uh, quite a few resources available for this book. I'm going to do some videos, short videos, showing some of the key concepts from e each of the chapters. So, I start off with by, of course, talking about the well, I call it the myth of the one correct repeatable technique, right? So, the kind of the foundation on which the ecological approach is built is I call I'm calling it the anti-repetition revolution, right? The idea moving away from the idea that we become skillful, which is, you know, as I show in the chapter, is a very, very strong held idea. There's tons of quotes people have about the importance of repetition and, and having the correct technique. And of course, bringing in I, the ideas of Bernstein and other people about moving away from this idea, the, the repetition without repetition revolution. So trying to dispel the myth that that's the way we become skillful. Right, so that's the place that I start pulling in all the the pieces for that and trying to to show you that that that's the wrong way to think about things. Then I try to go on to talk about the fact that one of the reasons that's incorrect is our body is not designed to do one thing over and over. We're built to both produce and detect variation. 
right? So I give examples of how your body is meant to be variable, right? And I give examples of, you know, your heart rate, your eye movements, a whole bunch of different examples of how variability is really a, a key feature of your body. And then I try to go into the explanations of why that is the case. You know, this figure showing here, the idea of stochastic resonance, the idea of degeneracy, right? So in the book, you know, I try to explain the key concepts. I'm, I don't go into all the high-level terminology. Um, I try to, you know, there's some of that, but I try to use it kind of sparingly just to get to the main key ideas about this, right? So uh, we were built to produce and detect to talk about, you know, how your sensory systems are really, they're designed to detect things changing, varying, not staying the same, All right? So that's kind of the subject. So I'm kind of, in this book, I try to kind of build a story through the chapters. That's the way I kind of wrote it. Instead of researching tons of articles and things, I kind of tried to write it kind of free form where I just kind of flowed from one idea to the next, right? So that's kind of where I go. The next is I, I get into what I call the business of producing movements. So I get into the analogy of, of movement production, perception action as a business, right? And contrasting the traditional hierarchical top-down central executive model versus self-organization and trying to convince you why you don't need a boss. And I go into, I try to contrast the two. I try to show you the advantages of the, the two different approaches, disadvantages. And also in this chapter, I try to get into kind of how the business model of, of, of learn, motor learning, the traditional business model has spun off into tons of training technologies and training methods, right? Without uh, almost our awareness of this has kind of been lost, right? That we're really have this assumption of how things are, are done, being done that may be flawed, and right? And so I kind of challenge some of the training methods and some of the training technologies, right? And really getting into what exactly is self-organization in this chapter. Then I get into the idea of course constraints, right? If we're gonna self-organize and I, I bring in the idea that, you know, if, if variability is good and we wanna be able to move in different ways, I bring in, of course, the degrees of freedom problem. How do we decide how to move, right? Well, we talk about the problem, the inherent problem people have of choice, right? Human beings are not good with lots of choice. How do we do this? And I show the kind of paradoxical, the idea that constraining gives you freedom. Right, I talk about the idea of constraints, giving some different ideas of task constraints, cultural constraints, and I, and I try to get into um, what different functions of constraints are, right, and show some specific examples, right, and uh, I get into this in more detail later on, but I just want to give a kind of a general introduction of what constraints are. Then I get into uh, something that you don't always see connected with this ecological dynamics, right? L loosely, but I, I don't think people have always gotten into full detail about this, getting into embodied perception and affordances, right? So not only do, I, I, like I say in the book, not only do we have a revolution in how we think we produce movements and become skillful, right? in terms of variability and self-organization, there's also a revolution in terms of what we think our perceptual system is trying to do, right? Um, and how we perceive the world. Not We don't perceive the world until the, in terms of the physical properties of our, that are out there. We see the world in terms of affordances and, and embodied how we scale it from our action capacities and things like that. So I try to tie that into the ideas of movement, you know, self-organization and so on. And this, of course, I bring in, of course, this, the other central figure in this revolution, I'm calling it James Gibson, and talk about his work and, and his ideas. I then try to bring in the dynamic side of it, right? Talk about, you know, some of Newell's work and Kelso's work on the, the idea that learning is, is search, right? And and really kind of, I uh, really, I tried to keep a fairly high level uh, discussion of attractors, right? And, and, and what an attractor is, the idea of intrinsic dynamics, the idea that we have to build on top of what each of us has. And I try to relate this to some specific examples like, I get, as his title suggests, Tim Tebow. So trying to talk about the dynamics, the idea of attraction, um, these things in terms of the, how we learn, bifurcation, right? All these kind of concepts on a fairly high level way, again, linking it to the problem of that I set out before. We, we, we want to produce movements in, in different ways. How do we constrain the problem? How do we find solutions? Right, so that's what you'll find in that chapter. Then in the next two chapters, I get in very specifics on the new 
kind of ways of coaching in the ecological dynamics approach. And I, first of all, I talk about the constraints led approach, talking about what the goals of constraints are, what we should, why, what's the purpose of a constraints manipulation and giving examples, sh illustrating the key concepts and why we constrain and how we should be constraining and what should we be looking for, right? So the constraints led approach. Then I get on to differential learning, talking about the ideas of that. Um, in both of these, uh, I'll sum I summarize the research and try to talk about all the studies that I've, I've found that have compared and contrasted them and try to bring that in, show you the benefits, right? To show you why we do these things instead of trying to explicitly tell you how to change your technique, right? And I show you some examples, the problems with explicit instructions about technique. I bring, bring all that in and talk about these different ways of doing things. So those two chapters. Then I get in kind of to the challenging issue of, you know, if we're going to let people search and explore, you know, exploring is a very dominant idea within across this whole book. And I talk about if we're going to let people out, out there and searching and explore for movement solutions, how do we know we're setting them on the right path, right? How do you know we're leading them into a fruitful field of vegetables and fruits and not off a cliff, right? If we're letting them explore. So I talk about how, what a good solution is, what an optimality is, and how we can, you know, coach to know whether an athlete is effectively self-organizing. So getting into some of those, those issues. Then I get into kind of some of the things that I think are important to talk about that are related that are, you know, only sometimes pulled in, talking about what it means to be creative, right? A new view, you know, of creativity as exploration, the exploration, interaction with the environment side of things. Uh, talking about some of the stuff you may have already heard, but then getting into some other examples and really emphasizing how do we get people to be creative, right? What are the methods that we can use to do that and how it connects with the other ideas? Then I get into the idea of the youth coaching, right? Um, you know, I start the book, as you'll see in the very thing with kind of lamenting how we've, co we've coached kids and the kind of the problems I see with it that a lot of other people have expressed as well. I just kind of highlighting them and summarizing them and how we can change, how we can do things differently. What are the limitations with the way we're doing things and how we can do things differently? The idea of fundamental movement skills, we'll get into that in there and talk about, uh, about this as well. Then I kind of get into uh, the next chapter, I get into, you know, how this totally changes our view of what it means to learn, right? Moving the way from this asymmetrical idea that we acquire things and really kind of one, two of the things. So what I'm trying to shoot down in this book or challenge at the very least is that I, there's two kind of dominant ideas in, in motor learning that come from a long time. One is repetition. You, you learn by repeating, repeating, repeating. The other is automaticity. We need to we get skillful by removing ourselves from the environment, by becoming reflexive, uh, habitual, right? We want to be like a soldier. We want to have it drilled into us so it comes out automatically. So I'm trying to challenge these ideas and, and really get it through good, the idea of direct learning and, and what we actually happens when we become an expert. And I give lots of examples of, of things, uh, you know, examples of education of attention. What do we mean by that? What is it? And so on. Then in the last few chapters, I tried to get into some practical, more practical implications. Um, in chapter 13, I talk about what I think is the evolving role of technology and data, right? Moving away from the, uh, you know, traditional way we use these things to correct technique or, you know, uh, put in the ideal form or, you know, overloading a, uh, an athlete with data to talk about what I think are better ways of using this these things to support self-organization, variability, so on. And I really emphasize the message that I give in this chapter is the important role for the coach. The coach needs to be between the data and the athlete, right? And I really kind of stress that throughout the thing. Then in 14, I get into uh, injury prevention and adaptation. You know, um, what happens when you do get injured? Talking about evidence of how you can design practice to actually decrease the chance an athlete will get injured. Pulling in some of these principles, you know, this is where, you know, representativeness, coupling, you know, all these kind of ideas. And I cite evidence to show that there is growing body of evidence that following this kind of variability, anti-repetition revolution, not only makes you more skillful, 
but it decreases the chance you're going to get injured, which I think is a really, really um, important effect. And then the very last chapter, I try to do a couple of things. One is I try to talk about how I got where I am. I talk about, you know, I, the expression I've used sometimes is I self-organized to self-organization. So I talk about some of my own just kind of experience with this and why I have come to kind of the ecological approach, ecological dynamics and my own kind of thinking um, and do that and some of the problems that I see. And then I think one of the things that I tried to do, and this is just a little example, is I created infographics like I've been doing for all these topics. And I also, I tried to pull out some basic resources for people. If, as I mentioned, I want this book to kind of be a launching pad. So in this book, I pulled out in I pulled out resources that I think, you know, if you want to go further, right? So I've tried to pull out uh, things you can listen to, things you can watch, and things you can read that are the next kind of, you know, next places to go, next places to explore if you want to learn more about these specific topics. Right. So that's it. That's kind of the, the, in a nutshell, that's what this book is, how to, how we learn to move. As I said, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm happy with the way it turned out. If you've ever written before, you probably experienced the same thing. You go from loving it to hating it, to loving it, to hating it during the process. And then by the end, you're not quite sure what, what you feel about it, but I'm hoping people find it resourceful. I hope it, you know, it, if you're new to this area, it's maybe changes the way you think about what it means to be skillful. Um, if you're already in this, maybe, you know, you have other coaches you work, work with and you want to kind of get them thinking in that direction. I hope this is a good resource. And then if you're really steeped in this area, I just hope, you know, you'll find it enjoyable. Um, the discussion of pulling in, you know, I, as I said, I try to be a uh, bit pulling out more things that are not usually in, in some of the books you, you see in this area, you know, all these different technology, the, a lot of the research, you know, it's not a comprehensive research, but I try to pull in some key studies that I think are, are really important in this area. And then the exploration guide. So as I said, the book is now available on Amazon. I hope you can consider picking it up. Uh, I do have plans for a follow-up. I'll tell you about sometimes in the future, but I, I just want to revel in the, fact that this one is done for a little while. And um, so I hope you consider buying it and having a read. And uh, thanks for joining me. Cheers for now and keep them coupled.